Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! Okay, so before we move on, I just wanted to point out something that I think is really interesting. I'm playing this on Super Game Boy mode, like I said, which means... When it comes to scrolling screens like this, kind of have to go monochromatic so that colors don't overlap each other because of the way the Super Game Boy handles coloring. But then we have this screen right here. I'm going to pause it because I want to kind of go over to how exactly this works because it's actually really interesting, or at least I think it is. So the top area of the screen and the bottom area of the screen start out as monochrome, and what the Super Game Boy does is it changes the monochrome to green and brown in different sections. And as regards to the center area right here, these two are definitely not green and brown, they are pink and yellow. And in fact, you will notice that Pikachu's got pink cheeks, Jigglypuff's pink. Basically, it is changing the colors in this section of the screen to pink and yellow. And here's where it gets really interesting. At the end of this, as soon as these two go off screen, the screen will scroll down. Now, normally what this would result in as the ground passes through these colors, you would see it change colors. But what the Super Game Boy does here is it actually changes this section of the screen also to green and brown so that it seamlessly changes as though there was no color trickery going on. I just wanted to kind of explain how that works. Like I said, I absolutely love the Super Game Boy. It is my favorite game peripheral ever, which is part of the reason, of course, why I wanted to do this playthrough. Not in full color, but in Super Game Boy colors. Now then, when we last left off, this randomizer was actually starting out pretty interesting. So who do I have on my team again? Let's go over this. Well, part of this team is actually par for the course with me. I would always have a Girafferig and Flaffy on my team at some point. But then we have Strike Back the Clefairy. Generally, I will never use a Clefairy in Pokemon Silver. Definitely wouldn't have a Squirtle on my team, considering you normally can't even find a Squirtle in Pokemon Silver. And Ho-Oh generally comes so late in the game I don't even bother. So, this is definitely a different team for me. And it's probably gonna get even more different as the game goes on. Especially once, once that spotted egg, the mystery egg, comes into play again. And let's see here, Sprout Tower, experience the way of Pokémon. Oh, definitely experiencing the way of Pokémon, considering how many of us are Pokémon right now. Well, Maddie and Strikeback are right now anyway. I'm not born yet, like I said. A bell sprout over 100 feet tall. People say that it became the center pillar here. Okay, that is the opposite of being the way of Pokemon. That is being the way of a beam of wood. Although technically, I suppose Bell Sprouts are kind of made of wood, I guess? I don't know, what are vines technically made of? See the pillars shaking? People are training upstairs. That sounds dangerous. Sprout Tower was built long ago as a place for Pokemon training. Only if you reach the top will you obtain an HM. Oh boy, HMs. Uh, I have things to say about those, eventually. For now, welcome to the first main dungeon of the game. And as a dungeon, it is going to have random encounters. More importantly, it is nighttime right now, which means we are going to get night encounters here. Pokemon Gold and Silver really did a good job with day and night encounters, ensuring that you definitely had reason to play at different times of the day. That said, the encounter rate here is really low. You could almost get through this whole place without dealing with, um, any random encounters. Huh, Flaffy. Interesting. So normally in this place, you would find Ghastly's at night, as well as the occasional Rattata. Considering we encountered Flaffies before, I'm thinking the Flaffies replace the Rattatas, so what replaces the Gasolies? 
I like the buzz. You know, this is really not the best place to be training a Ho-Oh. Although it does make me wonder, does Electabuzz start with an electric attack at level 4? It seems to be focusing on Leer, that's kind of interesting. Uh oh by the way, is not going to get a lot of training here, having only 5 of these attacks. Especially considering... It can't KO these things in one hit. Had a little brain fart there, had to think about what it was I was wanting to say. Level up, please? Okay, that's a good start. Considering you normally encounter Ho-Oh at level 40 at the earliest, makes me wonder if and when it'll learn a new attack. However hard we battle, the tower will stand strong. Okay, you are normally a sage, I think? What is your rank now? What sort of thing are you? You are a poet. Okay, so this tower is now full of poets instead of sages. Starting with Eevee. Neat. Now we're actually starting to see some more random Pokemon in these trainer fights. Starting off, Eevee is going to be pretty simple enough. Ooh, even better. Critical hit. Awesome. So you can at least take on one more Pokemon before you're going to have to be taken out. What is that Pokemon gonna be? Another freaking electric Pokemon. Never mind. How about you, Giraffarig? I don't know that Marape actually starts with an electric attack, but why take chances? Let's see. Confusion or Stomp? Maybe Stomp. Stomp has a chance of making the opponent flinch. Not quite the case in this situation. Uh, Growl might be an issue as well. Lord attack? In that case, confusion to finish things off. By the way, nobody decided to claim to be a Jirapurig. But if they did, I would be so tempted to make it so that two people were the Jirapurig. One person be the head and the other person be the tail. I actually do that under normal circumstances. Like, I would name my giraffe rigs Joe and Bob. Or something like that. Given the character limit, though, I doubt I'd be able to fit two people's names on this. Unless... I so happen to have viewers named Joe and Bob. The flexible pillar protects the tower, even from earthquakes. Well, that's handy. I wonder if that works in real life. Do actual skyscrapers have a central pillar? Oh, protein. Okay, that is a good thing to be starting with. Uh... Do, I, do does Purple Boy want to start using these immediately though, or save them for later? I'm gonna say right now there's no guarantee that any of these Pokemon will still be in the team during Endgame. It kind of depends on what we encounter. I am being heavily encouraged to use the. Oh wait, never mind. I was getting things mixed up. Hi there, Beer Force! Welcome to this randomizer stream. It is interesting so far. We stand guard in this tower. Here we express our gratitude to honor all Pokemon. It is interesting, by the way, how the first thing I look at when I look at chat is not the names of the people chatting, but the colors. I am glad I am not colorblind. Uh, this will not work out. 
Totodile will not know a water attack, but they're aim much strong against fire attacks. Also, I believe this is the first Johto starter we've encountered on this playthrough. That didn't take terribly long. Ooh, there's that flinch we were hoping for. Use a tackle so as to not waste another stomp. That would be overkill. Gotta be careful whenever we're doing that strategy, though, because you never know, they might get healed, or there might be a miss or something. Paris, Paris, bug and grass. I was thinking maybe confusion would be better, but nope. It's not a poison Pokemon. That, on the other hand, is definitely weak against psychic attacks. Yeah, we're definitely seeing much more variety in randomized Pokemon now. Normally, in this particular dungeon, every single trainer uses a Bellsprout. So, nice to see a little bit more variety. I mean, given the theme of this place, it makes sense to see everybody using a Bellsprout. But it's also kind of boring because all you have to do is bring out your fire starter and burn everything. All living beings coexist through cooperation. We must always be thankful for this. Well, we got here revive. Kinda glad to be seeing a revive. Honestly, all Pokemon in the game should have early revives. Kind of important to be able to revive your Pokemon. Sway like leaves in the wind. Like, it is so weird you don't find revives until, like, midway through the adventure in these games. That's kind of started things out a little difficult there. Normally, you're supposed to get more difficult during the adventure. Uh, that is a ditto. Can you take out a ditto in one hit? Okay, good. Would have been certainly something if the Ditto turned into a ho uh oh But not a concern. Oh, another Johto starter. I imagine then that we'll eventually be seeing Chikorita in this place. Uh, fire versus fire, not gonna work. How about... Maddie? By the way, Squirtle's Evolution War Turtle, one of my favorite Pokemon. I just love how it has these feathery ears and tail. Of course, given that evolutions are randomized in this playthrough, Natty is not guaranteed to have any sort of feathers. Might grow some fur at some point. But who knows? Another Eevee, hmm. Natty is pointing out that he might grow a lot of feathers instead. That's entirely true. You might turn into... Or you might go from being a turtle to a bird. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the first randomized evolution. In fact, we could have possibly already had one by now, now that I think about it. There was a Kakuna near the start of the game, and those evolve at level 10. Ah, well. Squirtle doesn't go that much longer before evolving. Ugh, I'm weak. Yeah, but what does that have to do with your Pokémon? I tried to copy Bellsprout's gentle movements for battle, but they didn't train well enough. Again, your movements have nothing to do with the outcome of the battle. And if it does, I'd like somebody to prove to me that be the case. Oh, we're already at the top. 
And another revive! That is really awesome. Have the versus revives now. For when they are harder to find later. Outside of shops. I train to find enlightenment in Pokemon. Huh. Bear Force says that is Soviet agriculture. Basically the idea that plants are intrinsically cooperative. I'm not really so sure about that. It seems to me like plants are greedy. Like look at weeds. They want all the water. Cactuses want all the water. There are various plants that choke out other plants. I believe that'll be it for Ho-Oh. Uh Beaten by a mere child. Is that really that unusual? I mean, a child beat the entirety of Team Rocket. As Pokemon grow stronger, so does the trainer. No, wait. As the trainer grows stronger, so do the Pokemon. I don't know. I feel like some people would agree with your first statement. The Elder's HM lights even pitch black darkness. Oh yeah! So there's definitely some changes in this randomizer I made to HMs. We will definitely go over those as we go along. So then, Pineco. Uh oh is out of attacks. I have accidentally demonstrated this by using Struggle. Would be interesting though if Ho-Oh -Oh can get through the rest of this fight despite that. In fact, I think it will. Oh wow, you start off with Protect already? So Protect guarantees that you will not take hits during the turn that you use it. It is slightly overpowered. Slightly because if you try to repeatedly use it, it is less and less likely to work. Normally it is annoying when Pokemon use Protect because you used up a power point. That's one less use of that attack you have now, all because of Protect. In this case, though, it's not really a big deal, because we're out of power points anyway. It is my head that is bright. It, it is actually, kinda. Let there be light on your journey. As soon as I defeat the boss here. Okay, enough of uh oh. Let's see what Giraffe Error can do against this guy. Let me see how much you trust your Pokemon. I kind of wonder if Robo Boy actually has trust in his Pokemon, or if he's just following programming of using the Pokemon and... Well, that's just that. Okay, so if you're gonna keep doing that... Giraffe is going to get around that special, uh, that uh, physical defense. And in fact, confusion is definitely the better choice here. Level up, cool. And next up is Togepi. Interesting. So, the mystery egg that we'll be acquiring in a bit normally hatches a Togepi. However, in this run, it could be any Pokémon. 
well, any of the 252 that are available in this game, and you already know that attack. However, your flame breath is not all that strong. I'm kind of reminded of this animation I saw on YouTube, where if Mario used metronome, it was really funny. Yes, your trust is real. It is not far to the Elder. No, nope, actually, gonna be right here. Oh, and also... Question mark is here. You are indeed skilled as a trainer. As promised, here is your HM. But let me say this. You should treat your Pokémon better. The way you battle is far too harsh. Pokemon are not tools of war. Huh. He claims to be the Elder, but he's weak. It stands to reason. I'd never lose to fools who babble about being nice to Pokemon. I only care about strong Pokemon that can win. I really couldn't care less about weak Pokemon. Question mark, use escape rope. Okay, so here is the kinda sorta boss of the dungeon, and by that I mean he just happens to have the strongest set of Pokémon. So good of you to come here. Sprout Tower is a place of training. People and Pokémon test their bonds to build a bright future together. I am the final test. Allow me to check the ties between your Pokémon and you. Aside from being the strongest trainer here, he is otherwise just another po another poet. Starting with Houndour. Let's make this easier, shall we? Okay, let's not make this easier. Hey, straight back, it's your turn. I don't suppose you could be willing to use Leer a second time. Or several times, in fact. So Maddie is pointing out that this sage here, or sorry, this poet here, in the remakes he get his, gets his own sprite and class of elder. Yeah, they actually gave several trainers more significance in the remakes. Like the Team Rocket, um, the big, the big wigs, Exe executives, yeah, those guys. Who sing? That's gonna be nice to have. Wow, we're just getting one level up after another. So what's next, Psyduck? How about starting off with that sing? The odds of seeing working are not necessarily great, of course. One more time? Well, never mind that. So Beer Force says, I remember watching the show for that egg to hatch. Yeah, that was quite an event in the cartoon. Ash wound up getting the Togepi egg before we even knew what a Togepi was, so it was quite a mystery as to what would possibly hatch from it. And in fact, up until that point, we didn't even know that Pokemon came from eggs. Which in hindsight, sounds kind of weird, because, I mean, how else would Pokemon reproduce?
Maddie is correcting me, saying Misty kind of got it. Well, yeah, Misty wound up having the Togepi. I think, though, that it was Ash who was holding the egg. Oh, that, that hurt. Good experience, though. And that's that. Ah, excellent. You and your Pokémon should have no problem using this move. Take this Flash HM. Yes, Flash. Flash illuminates even the darkest of all places, but to use it out of battle, you need the badge from Violet's Gym. Okay, let's go over this real quick before we go on the first break here. So, Flash... typically kinda sucks. Well, HMs in general do, cause only certain Pokémon can learn certain HMs. However, for this run, first things first, I made it so that all Pokémon can learn all HMs, cause I do not want to reach a point in this adventure where I need to learn an HM, which is required to progress in the game, only to not have a Pokemon on my team that can learn it. That is absolutely infuriating and why I hate HMs, because it happened to me in Pokemon Black. And it sucked. Another thing in particular, Flash generally sucks. It lowers your opponent's accuracy, but Flash itself is not very accurate, only having a 75% chance of hitting. At least in the first three generations. In later generations, they fixed it, it's at 100%. Thanks to the randomizer, it is also 100% here. So Flash will actually be kind of useful for this adventure. I need to think about which Pokemon on this team will be learning it, because this is viable. It would be viable on any teammate. Well, I think about that, how about we go ahead and head into our first episode break of today's stream. And when we come back, we're gonna head off to the first gym.